Hello everyone, I'm MVL and welcome to the Pudding Fair! This is the one shot that became more than one adventure. But it's, you know, it's one <laughs> one shot adventure now in two parts. It makes sense. It makes sense. Don't look at me, judge. <laughs> Don't judge us. Anyway, I am MVL and I am playing Captain Grimbeard Shockmaster. He is a dwarf artificer. And uh, yeah, I'm going to shoot a lot of things with that weapon. Odin, what are you playing? Uh, playing Teal Copper Spine. He's a kobold bard. Then we have Nico. I'm playing Mirage. Um, she is a tiefling monk bard hybrid, and I will be chewing a lot of scenery, and I apologize in advance. All right. Um, and with that apology, John Master, the Jonin monkey, take it away, my friend. All righty then. So, um, welcome back to the tale of the Pudding Fair. We began far following Teal Copper Spire and the captain nicknamed occasionally Sparky. As you journeyed forth through the desert with the help of your guide Mirage to the gnomish city Le Bulb. Originally you were sent there to pick up a package but it was impounded at the post office so you had to spend a day around the city. But luckily the little town had a big annual festival that was happening on the same time. Known as the Pudding Fair. The celebration of the home half and just a series of fun games and entertainment for all. And indeed you had a bit busy day. You saved a prized pig from some bandits that were trying to cook it for a, a dying friend of theirs. Um, admittedly you arrested one and killed the rest, but you know, still a good day's work. You then perused did several of the competitions, managed to stop someone from choking to death at the eel eating contest, and were also able to share some stories as the final ceremony of the day took place, the eating of the titular pudding. However, something strange happened. When you woke up the next day, it was like time had reset. The day was playing out the exact same way. Everyone's they seem to have forgotten that they had already done these events before. The only other people re who had remembered were the bandits, who are now alive and just as confused as you guys. And after deciding that the bandits were going to go their separate ways, just because it felt a bit awkward traveling together with people who had, you know, you decided to try and investigate what was going on. You also decided to take it upon yourselves to try and maybe prevent some of the little the miniature tragedies, the small accidents that had happened to various people throughout the day. And this caught the attention of one old lady who was selling candy to children, but it turned out was the avatar for the half god of the home and half. The of goodness and kindness everywhere, Clavoy. You mentioned the concept of the time loop, and she realized that there was the scent of evil in the air. And after both she and you guys had realized that, that someone had been caught in a ruckus and turned the mayor of the town into a frog, you ch you followed Clowley into the woods, where you discovered who was really behind this. Erdlin, the gnome god of greed and murder. And he was launched into a monologue about how he wanted a taste of the titular pudding and was trying to blackmail Clowry into revealing her secret. She in turn tried to banish him, which he countered by turning her into stone. And hoping to try and have a quick and speedy re uh, resolution to this, our hero is offered that maybe they would just get a piece of the pudding or maybe even the recipe to just give to Erdlin. Erdlin seemed intrigued by the idea and was willing to give you a chance to prove yourself. However, upon further reflection, you realized, oh, right, giving them the pudding might weaken Clowerway's power and allow him greater influence over the area. It might be a quick resolution to the problem, but is this something you really want to do? 
And it is on that moral dilemma that we pick up our story. So, you guys have just come back from the forest. It is now around now the midday, as the Fuddy Fair is still on go. I mean, everyone, I'm still cheerful as ever with um, many different events coming on. And as people are walking in, make me a perception check real quick. Gosh. Okay. Okay, yeah, you all do nothing to do this. You hear there are a bunch of people talking amongst themselves going, Oh, oh my word, this, this, I, I cannot believe it. There's that one half thing. She's insane. She's been winning all the get games and everything. She even won the Elite contest. And there's some others going, Yeah, I know. It's the same about Porter, though. I mean, I mean, uh, I, mean I, I suppose. They say they, they live by the sword or die by the sword, I suppose. But the net and the other guys go, dude, dude, that's a really odd way of saying he tried to eat three eels and choked to death. Oh. Yeah, oh. this was the guy you managed to save earlier, but unfortunately, oh. no one was there to intervene this time. Well, that shows us. I thought what we did sticks, right? No. Nope. So, looks like we might have to remember and then divide and conquer when it comes to it. <laughs> All of it. Okay. That's how a so, one-shot adventure becomes two parts. Guys, so, so, so. Like, getting him the pudding is, like, totes out of the question, right? Right? Because, like, this is annoying. The person, have we heard a description of the person that won? Like, did we just see them exit that area on screen and move into the tent? You know what, with that... With those high perception checks, I'll say that, yeah, you managed to pick up the description. Uh, uh, basically, you're, all you're hearing is like town gossip, but you, the, able to hear uh, someone go, don't give me a suspense, who was this person? Oh, they were from outside of town. They had like like had like short or couple on the hair. They were like wearing leather uh, or armor. And I will say, I'll get maybe that, te- you know, that you're looking around. Did you actually see someone matching that description walking into the main tent in the set, end of the um, uh, fair, fairgrounds where the giant pudding is being stored? Ooh, we got another outsider. Fun. They've uh... just gone in the tent. Ah, uh, they went that way. Do I talk to them? Like they might be a little bit better than like the bandits that we totally murdered yesterday. Uh, they can't be much worse than them. And with that ominous note, let's go find him. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So you got eyes what's at the essential to enter the town, and you guys follow back in the, uh, the tent, and you arrive just in time to see that this halfling that matters the description is leaping from table to table. Follow the contest, which Mirage you attempted and almost got a good time, almost, but slipped to the last hurdle. I want to also throw stuff. Uh, get in on I'll the front. Then. Okay, she's about to make the final leap, so go ahead and make me an attack roll. I'm just gonna yell, "Woo, you go, girl!" And I'm gonna <laughs> just, I'm gonna just gonna use this unarmed attack. Yeah, go for it. Nineteen. Okay, she he leaps across us, and everyone else has been missing, but you, even in your. Inf- advise rush you can never really get the martial arts training completely out of you so there is like woo go go you grab a nearby tomato go and uh fire a really well well trained shot that manages to smack it there we go and she almost falls off but he just manages to make the final loop and go yes woo and i clap (laughs) you you clap and the everyone else is going oh yeah, 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 yeah. As all the goes on, you hear the, the organizers step up and we go, oh. Well, that was a last minute entrance, man, but you made it just in time. Can I last minute, last minute, please? I'm, I'm afraid, ma'am, it's oh. just last minute. Plus, uh, I already have your name down once. So, uh, it was a last minute entrant, but what did you say your name was? And the half moon closer photo goes, mm-hmm. my name is Elsie. That's all you need to know. And you see, he matched the description. It is a half thing with like very um, sh- or uh, roughly cut uh, blonde hair, and she he is 
dressed in leather armor, which she definitely gives the implication of being a traveler like you, you know, someone who's um, seen a lot of things. And as she these steps up, um, we get given this essentially almost like show off his attitude of like that one person somebody who has the standard of cool pose when they know people are looking at them. So... <laughs> can, I don't give it off slightly more edge than shit. But anyway, he steps up, up and there he goes, Ma'am, you, as, as you won this contest, you have indeed won the first prize. And like I said, just in time for the pudding itself to be cut. You on the first slice. And everyone on, on the clear time goes, Wow! And as everyone slowly clears the table to prepare for allowing actual eating to take in place, the mayor's wife still cradling her toad-shaped husband in the corner. She steps up and goes, Ah, this, thank you, thank you. It has been an easy day, let me tell you, but it's been a lot, lot of fun. Oh, that, oh, there's one thing I can only say. The fun has only just begun yet. And then suddenly... Smoke suddenly begins to fit all the entire <laughs> as all this is going on. Make me perception and check. Too distracted by the Batman gimmick. Smoke bursts into the room and you're like, oh my god, what the heck is this? I was like, Ooh, Tail, I wonder what's happening. <laughs> Tail, you pay a bit more close attention to the environment, able to uh, see as your eyes. Your mercenary training kicks in as you suddenly hear three sounds. One, something in tearing through the fabric at the back, and which it essentially sounds like someone's hooking up a cart, along with as before all your very eyes, the pudding gets pilfered. Ah. Um, you are the first to quickly catch up before anyone. Oh, shout out! They're stealing the pudding. No. <laughs> Not the pudding! As it quickly vanishes off into the. Oh, whoops! Arr, they took the God, whole tent too! Now, for even he knows no bounds. <laughs> <laughs> Everything begins to slow and disappear as the smoke dissipates. You guys are the only ones who. I will say with that hyper set. Actually, to. Hey, to hey, oh, you're the one who notices that the card seems to be pulling away in a northwesterly direction, like it's heading towards the forest. Uh, okay. We're gonna have to sprint after it, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, I think so. How far away has it got? Because I have a lot of range on my cannon. If I could attempt to aim for the wheels. How far is the range in your cannon? What's the maximum range? My cannon has a maximum range of 500 feet at disadvantage and 150 feet within its normal range. Okay, right. I will say that you can either make a ranged attack at disadvantage you can make an athletics check if you want to try and run after the cart, or a survival check to try and figure out which direction it will be heading to cut them off at the pass. It's entirely up to you guys' choice. I'm like quite low to the ground and quite an old pirate who has a peg leg. And so I'm going to try and shoot it. That's going to be what I do. I will um, <laughs> give you a bardic inspiration as my action. The only thing I've got a hold person. Um, I've got a thing that makes me increase speed if I hit something, but I think that's hitting a creature. Mm. Also, so... don't, don't forget that as well. Uh, because you ate one of Clara's magic candies, you could also run really fast. Oh, <laughs> that's still that's still going. I'm still in hasted. Yeah. Yes. You, you are. Oh my god! New bitches. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. I can go ahead and make the attack. It's now a straight roll since um, Tail has given you bardic inspiration. You're pulling up on the cannon and... Hey, how are you giving inspiration out of the record? More of a, uh, you know, aim, aim straight, aim true, hit the wheel. <laughs> Don't you dare miss. Appreciate the sentiment. I'm going to plant my feet and try <laughs> and monger it. There we go. And that okay. is terrible. You shoot and I'll get... If it is, it's close enough to make it suddenly swerve. So, Mirage, you can now make an athletics check to try and catch up to Oh boy, I'm not great at that, but you know what? Let's give it a gosh darn shot. 12? 
You are moving much faster than anyone normally would. It just swerves. You're able to just sort of order delay it, and it, the shot before cut, also you can't just swerve and you essentially get it off track, which allows you to but stay within the visual right range of it, which at this point, I can, and I'll say, I would like you to make one more athletics to, uh, to continue to keep up with it. The okay. other two, you can decide whether you both want to do this or whether to, you really want to give it another inspiration. Give me survival checks to see if you can uh, keep up with Mirage and or uh, car. Alright, survival. Yeah, I can assist for advantage. Okay, go for it. Advantage. Oh, it attracts me this okay. way. They're big old wheels. <laughs> <laughs> you using that amazing logic and also keeping track of Mirage who in fairness is like not quite a big grabbing distance but is just managing to keep up continues to follow the card you guys are able to keep track of them and you also notice it's a spot where you can essentially get a slight shortcut of where they're going and you guys end up just in the forest outside the thief is trying to pull away with the cut uh, uh, put it in. Oh, she's kind of like looking back at us. I'm going, Roddy, how? Not used to a team running fast enough to catch her up, up with a cut up like this. And as she's running around, I'm like, oh no, trying to think, okay, I can shake them off of the forest and, ah, no. She sees you, you two on a nearby outcrop in the sit enter, Matt, and it's going to catch up and ready in your weapons. As I, I now say, roll initiative, folks. So, oh, it look, looks like old Sparky is going first, followed by Mirage, then because they have the higher decks. Well, it's Tail, and then finally Elsie. So, with that, you're on the top of the round. Sparky, are you prepared for this? You, your cannon is primed. I am glad to be rolling well after last session where I feared that I had gained Panther Leo's rolls. So, let's see <laughs> how I can respond to this. They're in shooting range or are they in like running over and jumping onto them range like the temptation is like to move 20 feet and then to try and leap i am not the most spry individual so i'm not <laughs> sure if that's going to be worthwhile i will move 20 feet towards the edge and i think i'm still going to try and disable the vehicle i don't want to shoot the horse and i don't know enough about the driver to fire at them yet so that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Uh, I'm going to plant the feet for... A f use my action to do the Thundermonger attack. And that is a 26. That's a 19. Oh, yeah. So that's definitely hot enough to hit it. Uh, go ahead and roll damage for me. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. Regular damage plus the D6 Thunder would be 16 total. Okay, yes. Much better than me just jumping okay. off the edge and falling flat on my face. You to AK with your marksmanship your training. Now that you're cl closer, it's finally able to kick in and a crackle of energy for eyes for it and manages to smash one of the front on wheels. Elsie manages to do a dexterous enough leap so that she manages to stay on the horse and get clear, but the cart itself is completely wrecked and the pudding thankfully manages to land in one piece as it just kind of, almost like a weird gigantic they try for, even after the car crashes, it just kind of it goes boom, 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 boom. almost like a weird jelly consistency, it just manages to wobble but not fall down oh my god, it's a gelatinous cube, y'all there she goes Alrighty. to the rest of you with that, Mirage, you are I had a plan to top the thing over but that is not needed anymore so I'm going to charge up here and like do a backflip and land in front of her and go be like, hey, gorgeous, I wanted to talk to you after like the whole thing. And then you ran off and like, this is a pretty cool stunt that you just pulled. I think we should be friends. I'm going to cast Charm Person. That's a wisdom save. And she does have it with advantage because we're currently fighting, question mark. But I'm going to give it a okay. shot anyway. You get the sense it's not working. I, I am sincere with this, so just FYI. Yes. <laughs> Fair enough. All righty. You get they said that the magical booster to your or, or natural charm isn't working. Let's yeah, put it yeah, that yeah. way. All righty then. Tail, you're up. I'm going to move a little closer. Since it worked so well last time, I'm going to cast Suggestion on her that she should surrender. Okay then. 
Okay. So as we come round out to her turn, she's buried down near the horse and goes, Ha! Do you really think I would fall for that, I surrender? <laughs> and just goes, Yay! Oh, this is <laughs> and as you fall out of cut on Barrow Fast, everything up, D hops off the horse, get hands still all remaining up, up and is looking perplexed like this isn't something she would normally do. And it's just there that you go, Okay. This feels weird, I'm not going to lie, but I guess peace? Yeah, otherwise we'd have to like bash your head in or something, and that would suck, because you're cute. Thank you, you're cute as well, I guess. Okay, Aww, seriously, who are you I people? Know. Hey, Milaj, <laughs> if you could uh, disarm as well as flirt, that would be helpful. Oh, oh, yes, yeah. cool, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll disarm All her. Right. <laughs> I can read the externity check, but with advantage, because she is still under suggestion of it. Okay. There's like a slight twinge of the fingers, but you're able to just basically grab her da daggers and any other weapons she has on her. Look, uh, I'm real sorry, but we're going to straighten this just... out, and then you're going to get everything back, so you yeah. know. Except the, uh, the big old uh, pudding. Can't have that yeah. back. Are you working for the evil gnome? Is this your first time here? <laughs> if you know what I mean, uh, wink, wink. I'm, I'm very confused. Um, I don't know. I'm not aware of any evil gnome you're talking about. And uh, no, I'm new to, to town. Although this isn't uh, my first time someone's flirted with me. Oh, that's not what I meant, honey. But that's okay. You'll find out soon enough. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was not. I didn't mean that creepily. It's just, yeah. Um, anyway, why are you stealing the pudding? She, he got, I don't know, I was confused and goes, uh, this is, um, hmm. You know what, I don't think you'd believe me if I told you. Try Jesus us. Christ. Make me a persuasion check with advantage. <laughs> okay, well, it's the girl's hand and crazy but so I was just chilling at this fair and then it just kind of repeated this again like it just like we lived this same day twice and the first day I just kind of sat back and chilled you know just uh, took it easy just kept lay down low didn't want to um, cause anything major and then suddenly this whole Thing happened and I seem to be the only one who remembered it so I thought well there must be some magic in this or maybe it's like divine intervention and I remembered that uh, a, there was a guard um, Brando Barris who said challenges like this and I thought maybe maybe if I did enough deeds that I would earn his fame that would break it and we could just you know time could be normal again and then i could get out of here and do what i was doing see that's totes what i was asking you if i asked you if it's the first time that you're doing this because hey second time too hey what's up uh yeah yeah totes believe you been there done that yup Right, so... Also, there's a bunch of bandits that are also doing this, like, the second time around. We killed them last time, but they're back now, so... Most of them. We let two live. Yeah, we can kill them again if we need to. Yeah. Wait, do you guys have a... You know what, I better not answer that. You can either make religion checks or insight checks. I'll be up to you. Alright, I'll make insight. Arr, this is a mysterious one she is. I just cannot figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Okay. You not really hurt a little bit. I mean, half of the gods haven't had as much notoriety. You haven't really hurt uh, the Brando Barris very much. Mirage, you kind of quickly... You notice from the, the shifty carry on that the fact that she hesitated before saying the word deeds specifically, how I was paid attention to the way you described the bandits and how you described killing, 
essentially she's wondering if this is like a trial from a criminal god. She's a thief, basically. She's just like, okay, maybe if I steal enough, that breaks it. So oh, she's now that... wondering, wait, are you guys criminals as well? Is that why you're in on this? Okay, not gonna lie, that's, that, that kind of just makes her hotter. All right. So, okay, so you were already talking about, like, that god, right? With, like, the whole mischief angle, okay? So from what we've gathered, it's like there's two of them. There's, like, the good lady and him, and he just wants the pudding. So we should probably, like, put a guard around the thing that he doesn't steal it right now. Um, we should bring it back to the town. Anyway, like, he's trapped us there, and she's trying to fight it, so... I feel like we should probably, you know, help her get stronger so she can break it. We haven't really talked about this yet. Like, we don't really have a plan or whatever, but we probably should, like, the, those of us wait, that wait, are Wait, wait, hold out. on. There's huh? this guy who just wants the pudding. Why not just give him the pudding? Well, something, something, religion, power, symbolic stuff makes evil things happen. You see evil now. And if power. he eats the pudding, then there's going to be even more evil, which, you know, he's just going to be more powerful, which I'm not entirely sure is going to check out of letting us out. Make me a persuasion check. Come on, Phoebe. I really you make a persuasive argument, especially when Teal also helps while you just pointed out, look, he's the evil. No, she breathes out a long protracted so and then goes, <sighs> Yeah, I suppose that... She mutters something under her, her breath and then goes, All right, all right, all right, fine. I help, help you however I can. Uh, I don't know how much help I can be. I don't have the power to do... She points to the destroyed wheel of her, her car. That. I can sneak around if you need help or anything. I mean, you won like a bunch of contests, right? So, I mean, do we have a plan? Do we have a plan? You're smart, Sparky. Do you got a plan? Because I don't. Uh, I think if we did good things, it might give her the power to break the curse. So I, think I... I checked on all the eels. Yeah. And then we probably got to save the guy from the cart again, right? Because that will happen again. And next time we should try and save the mayor from the toad. What else happened? Oh, right. The sheep got stolen. Oh, but that was the bandits that didn't do uh, that. We need to meet with the bandits and, like, talk this out with them, too. We might have to save the bandit who's dying as well. Oh, shit. How do we do that? We would need a healer. A real, proper healer. Wow, you guys have done a lot. Do you, like, sleep or anything like that? Well, yeah, but, you know, the days That's repeat, so... Uh, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, okay. You know what? I uh, give me the directions of when things happen. I can probably stop the guy eating three eels. My bad. I was I was trying to win, and I no just... worries. You can still totes win, and also stop him from eating the three eels. Okay, fine. <laughs> oh, uh, I also I also helped the stand-up comedian. We oh, do that again as well. Oh, her. She's already got booed off the stage of this. Run in the woods. Oh no. Yeah, I should do that again. Um. What else? What else? What else did we miss? The the puppeteer who got... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, so puppeteer got, almost got ran over. Dude who almost chokes on eels. A stand-up comedian. Oh, toads! Toad. Mayor Toad. How are we going to deal with that? And bandit. I think a lot of these, it sounds like it's going to come to the luck, but I'm willing to help however I can and also... But, okay. I'll tell you what, if you tell me what happened, I'll take, take care of this puppet here and the guy choking. So you guys can focus on the other much larger stuff that you don't seem to have a clue on and are uh, praying for blind luck. Could I insight check if I believe she will actually do that? Go ahead. Yes. You get the sense is that she's someone who's normally like predisposed to just looking out for herself. But now that she knows that you guys are, can easily defeat her, she's like that um, one bratty kid who, once you scold them and like nag them to do something, they'll do it begrudgingly. Like that, she's definitely going to do it. She probably not with the best of intentions, but she is going to do it to make an effort of it. Well, uh, the days be repeating, so 
if this doesn't work and it doesn't give the lady deity enough power to end the curse, we can always try it your way in the end. And if you do a good job, we'll give you your weapons back. Okay, okay. Fair trade, fair trade. It seems like I don't really have much choice in the matter anyhow. We should still talk to the bandits though, right? Because we need to figure out what the dude has. And if they, well, they were looking for a healer, I think, the last time that we saw them. Right? Yar, there might be a healer in the town. Yes. Go. Let's find out what they did today. And we should get the pudding back. Do you want to just like v- oh, vanish? And we'll be like, we totally caught the da- dastardly criminal. Here's your pudding back. Okay, yes, uh, I will do that. I will go and hide. Bye. And she instantly starts bolting off the door. I would like Can I see to... you tomorrow? <laughs> I would like to cast Mending on the wheel, if that is possible. Yeah, I'll say that's possible. You're able to fit it back together, and the wheel will put it back into town, and you're welcomed by the enthusiastic crowd of, Huzzah! Huzzah! These brave, mysterious heroes who have come out of nowhere to save our, our car, our and our pudding! Pudding for everyone! A little bit grassy, but still, pudding for everyone! You engage in some of the pudding, but you then go outside and make me... A survival check. Like, as you begin to track down um, the bandits and try to figure out where they've gone. So, you begin to split up around town. You Unfortunately, it seems like they've been wandering all over the place. You're not able to pin down anything, especially since like the day is getting on, night's coming down, and it's harder to see the tracks. Teal, you're able to like break off by yourself, and you do manage to catch up to at least two people. On the very edge of the town, you come across this guy who's chatting up on the bushes. You also find at the very edge the age you had casted suggested and on earlier. And they are talking with the bandits going, Look, I'm just, I'm just saying, we just completely wasted time. Like, this is the Second day in a row, we could have actually maybe broken the curse or done something useful by now, but no, we went off to find that hu- obelisk, we went through the trouble of kidnapping them, which, by the way, not easy to do with all the, those uh, the freaking around, and they still couldn't help, so you, you know what? I just have a very simple solution, a very simple solution. This town's magic, right? So, I'm just saying, tomorrow morning, we should, well, first off, Get rid of the, him, because he's not helping us all, and we should take care of this permanently. What do you mean permanently? You know what I mean by permanently. Yes, but what former permanently? You know the one I mean, the one I'm specialised in. Uh, you can make me an insight check if you want. I think the other guy in the conversation needs to make an insight check. <laughs> oh yes. So you still have the lucky feet from the magic. So, with that insight, you I only realize two things. One, there's a reason that the suggested spell worked particularly well. When you cast it on him during the fight, you you basically cast it that uh, the idea that this is all pointless and they should walk away. Turns out that's what they were already thinking anyway. So the suggested spell, that was why it worked particularly well that day. Because it turns out, it seems like when they said, get rid of him, he, they basically mean overthrow of their current leader. The second, and permanently in this case, you gather for their remains, they're thinking of burning the town to the ground. I mean, that's so, an option. I think that's one so, Teal's going to take back to the others, not feeling so secure on his own. You three all head back to the tent to meet up, and it's a little bit of a contrast that you can hear the ch- there's a merriment of people inside, snacking on pudding and swapping stories, whilst also... Uh, not only do you have the knowledge that this is all going to happen yet again, but you now said at the story that the bandits are thinking of potentially burning the place to the ground. Did we, on our wild goose chase, hear about any more tragedies that happened today? I'll say you, Mirage and Sparky, make me perception checks. Perception. Oh, shouldn't have been advantage. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Five. Mirage, you didn't really hear any. Do you know pa- why? Tend- because I was looking for the, 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 the captain of the bandits and describing him in 
very, very detailed detail every time. So <laughs> people just, were just kind of like backing off, like, okay, uh -huh. crazy lady. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, muscular, muscular. Okay, bushy beard. Got it, got it, got it. Like, like this, this little scar that up here. That's like, you know, it's just like, mm, it's just a little bit like, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't want to yeah, speculate. Yeah, I've got that. Yeah, yeah, I've got but, that. I've uh... got that. Great, great, great. Uh, I'll let you know. I told you something else about Okay. You have an investigation around. You do hear, you hear a couple of small old feeds. You heard about how. The Grease Pink Contest, the ball was slightly larger than expected. And the wrestling contest, unfortunately it didn't happen due to an unexpected injury of the Master of Ceremonies. Could I ask about a healer? Make me a persuasion check. Not very persuasive, probably because I keep putting my claw hand in people's faces. Um, uh, uh, well, we have a herbalist who's kind of missing. She was supposed to have arrived in town earlier, but, um, uh, but that's the closest. Anyway, um, she's, um, 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 so, anyway, nice to meet you. Sorry, sorry, sir. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> Arr, why are you running? Come back here. <laughs> I meet up with the group. Do you now all know? I still think we should speak to the herbalist ourselves. Yeah, probably tomorrow, huh? Bandits may not be the most diplomatic of individuals. Also, she might just have been gone, like, no, out of spite if they, like, kidnapped her. To be sure. We're going to have to deal with the bandits, then. Yeah. The other thing in the alert was that the oil bore contest, it was surprising that it's normally, like, a very young or like a piglet, but it was much bigger than expected. I think we're going to be spreading ourselves a bit thin. Even with the enlistment of our thief friend, we'll need to figure out like exactly... I think we will have to split off and figure out where we need to be in certain places to get through this one. Yeah, we need to deal with the bandits and we need to establish a timeline of like when what happens. We already know that the toad has to be done very early on because we did that almost for like the second thing and he was already a toad. That is true. Yeah. The puppeteer was the first thing that we did. So that's, that's really early. Though, right by the thief. The uh, guy choking on the eels you... was like somewhere in the middle of the last time yeah. that we did that. Yes. The, the thief on that one though. So that might be all right. Mm -hmm. And with that, if you all put in your plan and to get ever, another day passes and cycles through. Can we make a plan to wake up really early tomorrow that we don't get woken up by festival? Okay, yeah, sure. I don't know if we'll be able to, but we can plan for it. Can I just cast Suggestion so that we wake up early? I can do one as well. And I'll sleep in till you wake me up. Oh, so if I suggest right. you, you suggest me. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, let's do it. Okay. Teal, you should wake up in eight hours. <laughs> Maybe a bit earlier. Like, whatever feels comfortable with you. But like, not in the middle of a dream, because I hear that that's bad for the psyche. But like, so, you... <laughs> Uh, I think Sorry. I'm willing to make that sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> make me a check based on spell casting modifier. So go ahead and make, make me charisma rolls to see whether you can maintain that suggestion for out the night. Okay. <laughs> Amazingly, your charisma is so amazing that even after the spell has faded when you go to sleep, the suggestion lingers. And so you wake up. You gently you know, wake and sparky. You see, in the early hours of the morning, the innkeeper is never asleep. I got the same with those high rolls. You wake up at six rather than seven, so you've got on a football hour. And you wake up, up you see, in the early hours of the morning, I mean, the band go, mm -hmm. okay, okay, okay. So, uh, have you got up the trombone? Okay, yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. Uh, better get some tea. Um, so, the brass band is gearing themselves up, up for the uh, preparations at this point. So, Everyone is either getting their attractions ready, or they're just rolling up and uh, reopening their tents. What are you, you guys doing? Shall we do the bandits first? That we now that we have an extra hour, do we want to talk to those first? I'm guessing the bat that would be the thing to do. Hopefully, the toad then should be right for uh, the next. All right, let's show those bandits a thing or two again. Alrighty, go ahead and make me a survival or check. Wait, I wanna, I wanna like pop down to the inn and just get like a big breakfast spread in like a picnic basket. Oh yeah, you can do, do that. Perfect. <laughs> and then we'll go find the bandit. Kind of wake it up, leave a lot of cooks. Could we enlist the healer on the way? 
Okay, first off, go ahead and make me some survival checks. So, the two of you, we are used to making it enough, but thankfully, Aki from the many daring tales which may or may not be true, depending on when you ask him, about the daring of the Megalodon, is you used to having to be on the hunt and be wary of it all, all hours. So, you are able to quickly track down where they went, and you also pick up on something. The herbalist cart was on the outskirts of the town and just managed to rot up today. And you see this rather tired uh, looking you know, old herbalist pull up. He goes, um, oh, hello, um, sorry, you said you wanted a healer? Ah, uh, yes, there is a very gravely injured man who we need you to do what you can for. Oh, um, okay, hey, um, she takes up another two, uh, try to work herself up and goes, um, I'm more of a herbalist rather than a healer, but, um, I don't see what I can do, no, I guess. At the very least, like a professional opinion. Uh, okay, all right, um, I shall see what I can do. Using your amazing tracking skills, you are able to lead this, um, very eyed healer through the woods, round and round through the paths, until, once again, they'll actually stay with that high survival check. Part of the reason you're able to track the down is because you have a vague memory from the first time loop when the bandits had originally stormed the pig and you traced them back to their camp, and it seems they were still in more or less the same place. And, in fact, you cut on my cross the The leader is in the middle of the ar ar argument with the mage, going, What the hell do you mean, burn it to the ground? What p possible... Oh, how is this going to help anyone? Cooey, we brought it's... breakfast! Uh, um, okay. Maybe, what the, how, why are they here? I'm, who, who I'm, just going, I'm just going to do the thing where the person is so entirely confident in their ability to be here and they're um, like, you know, you're, like, you, you, you're absolutely certain I am supposed to be here. I'm just going to brush through them like with the herbalist, like, come along, come along. He's right here. Let's have let's have a look at him. <laughs> hi, guys. Hi, guys. You're still cute. Like nice bandana. OK, I've got some breakfast over there, but let's just let's just check out your friend first. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Please move aside, sir. <laughs> Make me a charisma saving throw as you do. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so, you and the herbalist just like walk past a lot of the bustling past. Like, Wait, wasn't that the herbalist we. And you just bust past it. She get, sits down and has a look at the man slowly bleeding out. He goes, Oh, oh no. Um, she has, has a look at them. Oh dear, oh dear. She. He said, I think he goes, I'm afraid I, I don't know this much he can undo for or him. He's his eyes and takes a head. Oh sadly I might make a miracle or to say him now. He's uh he's beyond my ability at the very least. What about the blessings of the divine? Ah. Uh, I'm not even sure that could save it. At which point, the maid bursts out and goes, Yeah, we know that! That's what, what you said when we dragged you out here yesterday! And she goes, like, yesterday? I'm just behind the maid, just behind her shoulder, looking at the maid, like... We thought a little bit of tact might change the outcome. And so, look, I, I appreciate the help, but... Um, okay, look, um, it's clear that it did, it's clear that it, it didn't work, and, um, look, I'm, I'm not sure what we could do, and which one, the main steps of it go, how about, we don't do anything, he's dead, I'm sorry to say it, but he's dead, he's pretty much on the way to being dead, and you know what, I think we have a bigger problem, which is that we've been repeating the same goddamn day for the past three days! And I'm really getting sick of it, you know that? I'm really getting sick of seeing so many happy people around all of those tents. I'm really sick of everyone we find I don't kill coming back to life. And I'm really sick of seeing your faces for a start. Young man, what? the feeling is mutual, but I have come back from being dead before. 
could <laughs> I attempt to use my healing magic and a combination of a prayer to Tamura, the god that keeps me going in this world currently, to try and heal them? Uh, At least help. Are you trying to use a healing spell or medicine check? I'm going to try and use a healing spell and a prayer to Timur if they will bless them to keep going. Roll the healing spell and make me a religion check. You or the healing into it with a wound closes up slightly and you keep making the pre as the guard, but the most you've done is kind of numb his pain a little bit, but you get the feet feeling that sadly there's not a lot you can do for him at this point. You get the feet feeling that if you had been able to do this several days ago, this might have been enough, but because it's like such a long wound and because it's gone untreated and the disease has kicked in, it's gonna take really, really high level magic to heal him. Like, we're talking about stuff like greater restoration or wish at this point. Well, thank goodness we know a god. Okay, so that's one thing off the list that we can't do ourselves. All right, so I'm just going to take the healer aside and say thank you very much. We're sorry they're a little bit weird. Anyway, here's like, what, like a gold for your trouble. And we'll, 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 we'll try and see that we can get him through. And she goes, oh, yes, yes, thank you. Um, I will be leaving now that, sorry, I couldn't help. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And she then begins to slowly run off. At uh, this point, Neil and Sparky make me perception checks. Perception. I rolled persuasion, but it was a natural one. You all caught what's up in this thing, but still, you uh, spot the maid slowly is beginning to cast a spell to blast Mirage in the back. I think they're doing that if I were you. We know about your the... plan to burn down the village as well. Oh, yes, of course you do. Why not? Why not? Why not? So, here's the question. What are you going to do to stop us? Do you have a better idea for fixing this? You could try helping us. With what exactly? We've already met the one of the uh, the good god here that runs it, Chori. If we can help her and we do lots of good deeds, it will make her strong enough to get rid of the evil gnome that's making the day repeat itself. Are you fucking kidding me? Make really, really, the day is repeating multiple times, but you're you're drawing the line at believing that it's God that caused it. Okay, all right, you're a little bit weird, sir. Also, you shoot magic out of your fingers. Come on, honestly, what's the weirdest thing that's happened to you? Definitely, probably not this. And now with advantage because of Thank that. Thank you. <laughs> A mage continues to look at you again. Okay. Even then, going around doing good, good deeds, it's at this point the bandit captain of York just sort of like, grabs them like that uh, uh, like pulls them up and goes, Well you fucking shut up The the mate just sort of dusts himself off and he goes, Look, if it is all true and it is gods, honestly of the two it sounds more believable than now it is evil burn it to the ground. I think we have better plans that we can concoct here, so... You got the bandit captain just sighs and goes, Okay. Okay. How do you want us to help you, exactly? Well, don't burn the village down. Okay, we've established we're not going to burn the village down. Don't abduct the herbalist. Well, you've kind of already taken care of that. I'm just, just putting that out there. Ooh, ooh, should we set them on the, on, like, the wrestling incident? Yeah, they've also got a what, lot of now? people, though, so we might be yeah. able to, like, split them up when we find out exactly what he's doing. So basically, we're gonna, like, take today mainly as a recon day, because we need to figure out what all went wrong and how to fix it. If it doesn't all work today, that's totes fine, but here's the list of what we already got, and we need to find out if anything else happens. Well, they could definitely help with the recon, right? Yes. And I'm going to just start doing like a breakfast spread and and like cutting up the ham and um, yeah, just. just yeah. You all have a very tense, very awkward conversation, a very awkward breakfast in the, in the middle of the woods. Um, we're strategizing with... while we're doing this. Just want to put that out there. Like hook some of the ham on his claws and just like hold it over the fire. As um, you you all are slowly partaking. 
you get the feeling that some of the bandits are more into it than others, and it seems like the mage is grumbling the entire time, but is willing to go with it out of fear of getting attacked by everyone else. The other bandits are just kind of... There are different levels from, eh, yeah, yeah, whatever, to... Okay, we're doing this now, I guess. Yeah, it, they can work with us or we'll kill them every single day. It does seem to be the, the only option they have. So, they go back to the Purdue Fair as it's 7 o'clock and you are now fully breakfasted. Once again, in the middle of the woods, you hear the traditional sound of the trombone starting up. Once again, the town crier, yup, and then at the top up of his lungs. Roll up! Roll up! Is it? <coughs> Ugh, God, I knew I should have uh, drunk that tea. Oh, love, roll up! Welcome to the annual pudding fair! Come follow me to the village square! And with his hastily improvised intro, we're back once again on the third time I'm doing this. Seven o'clock starts. You've got Elise running around and trying to uh, prevent the puppeteer and Porter from getting injured or choking on eels. Which other areas do you plan to recall? We set the bandits on like the injury of the wrestling commentator because we know that that's going to happen at some point. So they should at least recon how it's happening and maybe try and stop that. The first thing was the toad we wanted to check out. Yeah, was... we need we need to get to the toad. Mirage would also keep an eye out for the goddess in her disguise because she's not sure if that got rebooted too or if she's still a statue in the woods. You are able to find her and she is indeed um, a bag in her... Old lady disguise. Oh, um, good. I mean, the, the children candy. And I must say that at this point, the effects of your candies have worn off. You are now just moving at regular speed and aren't quite so lucky anymore. You never uh, get me a candy. We can try again today. Tent first. Yes. yes. But we might also want to speak uh, to her about potentially if she can heal that bandit. As you walk up, you do see a familiar look looking um, walking into the tent. As all three of you enter the inside, you see this fellow walking straight up to the bed, like people are coming up to him going, Oh, sir, can I interest you in a bath? As he just like walks through them, just like uh, in like the most impolite way, walking straight up to the mayor, who in turn is trying to confront him, going, Now see me here, what's the meaning of, of this? This is meant to be a th and At which point, the I get a green pallet and goes, now, you know, I throw what a tomato at him. To me last time. Make me an attack roll. I would like to aim for his hand that he has the powder in. Unfortunately, that is just a miss as Does he gets to the green powder and goes. <laughs> Unfortunately, not quite. It falls just a little bit in short as he pulls out the green powder and goes, Well, you brought me to my last time. And blows the powder in his face and it's probably goes, <laughs> And. He disappears from view before a slightly confused toad appears on the ground going Rrrr. At which point his mind goes, no! And he the cackles goes, ha 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 ha! Ah, well, I better get then use my place and uh, I've got my minions are probably helping me with the other task. And he walks by, are you guys just completely ignoring you? Okay, bye! So at least we have information. There's people helping him. Also, with the bardic knowledge, are we able to think of anything that could possibly undo the toad spell? I assist. Uh, yes. Make me... I cut on the checks with that one. So I'll say, hey, you two can put your heads together on this one. Something like a remove cursor to spell magic spells should be able to get rid of it. The question is, do you know anyone who knows that particular spell? Uh, either the bandit wizard or the herbalist? Or the bandit mage might. Did he have a spell book? He was in he need a wizard. As he stood about outside, annoyed, but at least knowing that at least why he does it, and the fact that he, he has minions, you are continuing in your debt of re econ. So with that, anything else you want to try and seek out in particular before it starts again? The pool contest is next, right? Are As we splitting to... up? Are we splitting up at this point? Let's do one by one. I don't know. We also need to speak to the deity. I suppose we could do the okay. deity first. We should, we should do that first. Yeah. Maybe All she right. can fix the toad. You find her once again and on the edge of town around here. She puts up and goes, 
Oh, hello there. How can I help you? Have you all been good boys and girls? Do you want some candy? Multiple times. Hi, can I have some candy? Look, this time I'm myself. Okay, you do seem like like the, the persuasion checks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> nice. Oh yes, you seem very eager to tell a bit. Hey, let me ask, darling. Roll me a d d6. Does she seem to remember us, or is she like not remembering us? She does. She's uh, no make me an it. insight check. It's either she's completely forgotten, or she's doing one incredible performance. But you're slightly distracted by the fact that with it is Cat Andy. As you eat it, a load of spot buckles like around a mirage, and then she disappears from sight. So it destroyed you are mirage. now considered He was a mirage all along. <laughs> <laughs> She still has, has a shadow, but you until, until this next long rest, you are now considered invisible. Oh my god. <laughs> oh damn it! I'm the face! Aww, <laughs> she says in character. <laughs> oh, it chuckles. He goes, <laughs> Aw, now just don't use that for anything naughty, all right? Wait, <laughs> do you remember us? <laughs> I can't say I would forget someone like you. You got turned into stone. I'm sorry, what? By the evil we... gnome. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, why don't we uh, just go to the woods to discuss this? I can show you some cool things to do when you're visible. Come and once again, you're lured into the woods away from prying eyes. And she looks at you and goes, Okay, you say I got turned into a stone by an evil gnome. What are you talking about? We give her the rundown. <laughs> yep. Do give up the full rundown. And her eyes wind and goes, Oh. Okay. Erdlen. So you see... Oh. I did feel a really strong presence in town. I just hoped I was wrong. You say that I... You say I got turned into stone when I tried to banish him. Yeah. You tried to fight, it didn't go great. I suppose oh, that is the flaw. In, in my current form through this avatar, my banishment spells take at least a minute to fire off, so I guess maybe I have to think of a way to distract him before I deform the spell. Hmm. Question before that, can you turn the mayor out of the toad? And can you mm. fix a bandit? Like a dying bandit. Hmm, that specific curse... Not within the power of this current form. If we do manage the bandit, maybe I might be able to do that if we, if he is chased out of this town. If Adeline's influence is gone, if he is fully banished, and enough good deeds restore my power, then yes, I should be able to undo what he has done. Okay, but good deeds totally give you more power. Hopefully enough to cure a dying man and undo the curse, yes. So what do you guys think? We just we keep doing today as a recon. We do need to find bad boys minions. We've got the bandits on also doing recon. We've got Elsie doing stuff as well. We could try and distract him long enough for a banishment spell, but I feel like he would dispatch us in a number of seconds if he wanted to. Hmm. Might be able to keep him tied up without uh, actual combat. Maybe just. Literally distracting him. Maybe. Yeah, he might want to, like, maybe if we say we're going to give him the cake and then, like, the other god hides in, like, away from something and then we just distract him long enough but with the cake. And so this point he mentions, you might be fine. The rules we've been placed under since the Sundering are a bit convoluted, but... I think as long as you don't attack him directly, he can't do any physical harm. Curses, maybe, but not through his own power. In our current forms, we can only engage with each other and our avatars. So as long as you don't attack him directly, you should be fine from any physical harm from him. The question is, if he has minions, he might set those on you. He definitely has okay. minions. Yeah. Okay, so... Do good deeds throughout the day, and then at the end of the day, figure out a way to make him just hang out with us for a minute so sh the lady can banish him. 
Well, let's find some minions then, right? I am super invisible and I'm, you know what? I'm gonna take off like this jewelry and you hear like, just like multiple clinks and clanks and jingles <laughs> as she just takes off the, the bangles on her on her arms and like the, the, the like the leg stuff so that she doesn't like <laughs> sound like a like a bag of cutlery rattling every <laughs> time she takes a step. I am That's stealth. Right. I will go look for minions. And that, in that case, you make me a survival check. Everyone else, it depends on how you're going to go about this recon. Are you just going to try and observe, or are you going to try and talk to people? Before we go, could we get Chari to give us the candies to me and Sparky? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. So she was saying, ah, yes, 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 this should be able to help out. Go ahead and um, roll, roll me some D6s. You are now also invisible. Ooh! What's a one? Uh, Spooky. You free, you're a bit more robust. Like, you can take anything that comes your way. In other words, you get 10 temporary hit points. Okay, fair. Um, Sparky will, since everyone else is invisible, they're probably going to split up and look for the minions. Sparky's going to go to the Grease Pig thing and figure out what's going on there. Okay, then. In which case, t you know, make me a uh, survival check as well. It is really weird. The two of you are like going around town. You don't actually see signs of anything. The closest you get to tell is like one odd incident where you're on the outskirts of the town and you see a child uh, running on the edge of the town going, <laughs> but you don't see anything in the area. And the mother just sort of blatantly re replies, ah, Nathan, don't go telling in stories. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow the child. I mean, if he's sort of on his own, I guess I could at least just ask him, even though it's going to spook the hell out of him. Or, like, go from where he came from? Because he, he came running out of the woods. Did I, did I, did I understand um, him? He's more running towards the woods. So right. what area of the town did he roughly come from? They were playing along the edge here, and then they ran, and they ran into the woods screaming, monster, monster. So you can go and did Either make a perception check to try and see what's chasing him, or a stealth check to try and follow the child. I'll see if I can find what he was running from. Okay. No! It's really, it's really bizarre. You're not seeing anything. Like, this child continues to run away and act scared, but you don't see a single trace of anything. No footprints, no shadows. You don't even hear anything that would indicate anything's there, so you don't know if this is a wild goose chase or if the child really was taken by something. Sparky, you decide to go to the oil oil cup on this. You can see on the edge of the town, there's like a, a nice elderly farmer now going, All right, kids, this is the oil cup on test now. You can see you here, our good old, old favorite friend. I've got a new one for you. He's a little fellow, but he's very slippery. If you get and manage to catch him, pay one gold. And you'll get a nice shiny in gold if you, you can catch him. He's a very young fellow. I call him Mr. Snuffles. Okay. And as he's saying this, you can feel... You, it's like you get a sense that something's wrong. The atmosphere feels much more oppressive than usual. But alrighty. Release Mr. Snuffles. <laughs> as a giant boar is suddenly released on these unsuspecting children. So, as we move over to this pig pen, Sparky, I would like you to roll initiative, as it seems you're the only one who can save these children from being trampled. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> as for the other players, Roll me a d4 each. Uh, this will decide how long it will be before you can uh, uh, join this particular fight. Okay, a while then. <laughs> so, it starts off with that uh, these kids are charging le left and right going ah! as this very greasy but much larger boar is now charging straight ahead and Okay, it decides to go after the older, more imposing target. Thankfully, a uh, pirate does look sufficiently dangerous enough. 
And it's going to make a charge attack. It is going to charge straight at you. Does a 10 hit? A 10 does not, thankfully. So it charges straight at you. It just kind of sort of slides to a stop up around there as you manage to duck out of the way just in time. And with that, it comes to your turn. Arr, that's a bigger bore than I thought. Good job there's all this mud here for it to slip on. No, I'm not going to try and animal handle it. I'm just going to shoot it. I'm going to plant my feet and I'm going to thundermonger it. Go for it. That is a 17. That is a hit. Go ahead and roll your damage as it slips by and you just shoot it straight to its side. You blast it straight to the side and it has a, a nasty burn across it, a wound pit is in the flesh. It looks mad. It definitely can't take more hits like that. Okay, it comes around to its turn. You guys are now three turns away, but it goes... Snort... What's it? What's it? It's horns. And then try nice to go you with its tusk again. Okay, thank goodness for those temporary hit points. Does a 19? It does. Okay. It slams a, a boar tusk straight into your chest. But thanks to the, the, thanks to the candy, you're feeling a lot more robust. So you think almost kind of like take it on the chin. It kind of do that whole martial arts thing where you kind of all like embolded in your abs. So it, it's kind of like... Boom. I'm okay. <laughs> With that, it comes back to your turn. Okay, I have the gunner feet, so I don't have disadvantage being a five foot. So I am going to do the same thing, plant my feet and thunder monger it. For the extra D6 damage. That's a natural one, never mind. So you go, Argh! you like, put the gun at black rage and then... Oh right, reloads. We now come back to the top of the round, so this is turn three. Have the children the run boys, by this point? I'm going to say that they now start ambering over the um, fences trying to get out. And as they do so, this boy is going to try and tusk you again because it is not happy with this behavior so far. But it misses as you, essentially, as you're cranking the arm, you block the tusk with said metal arm. <laughs> and with that, it comes back to your turn. Okay, this time, take a glowing ammunition out of that pouch, put it in there, wind the lever, and I will attempt to plant my feet and use my action to Thundermonger again. Alright, go for it. That is a 17, which I believe hit last time. Yep. It, did, it, it indeed. Go ahead and roll damage. That is 13 total. Okay. You blast it. This time, right in the face. It ducks out of the way to avoid a fatal blow, but a massive burden crackles along the side of its head. It does not look like... It. Like it's get us of revive another shot like that, and with that we come to the fourth round. So you guys can roll initiative and jot I now as you suddenly have heard all the come up ocean and and dear God have you heard, dear boy? They say like this gigantic boar is running wild and he's fighting a crazed pirate. The one pot I was in there. Okay, and with that, um, Mirage it. We now come to the top of the round, and you are now able to act as you, you in your invisible form, I should say, you have run into the battlefield, and you can see the scene going on. Okay, I'm invisible. He's making a lot of booming, banging sounds, so I am going to cast Thunder Wave on top of this boar and try and make it so that it sounds as if it's coming from Sparky. It's a 15-foot okay. square. Alrighty, it's making a con save. 19. Oh, yeah, that, that, that checks out. I like to imagine oh. that Sparky's thinking, I, I wish my friends were here to back me up. And then they get here and he's still thinking, I wish my friends were here to back me up. <laughs> <they're right> there. <laughs> <laughs> so, there is a sudden shock wave. The poor dick makes his feet in and he's shaking his head. Definitely a side effect of the gunshot earlier. That's definitely what's happening here as far as anyone else knows. I mean, eagle eyed observers might see that there are some extra footprints in the mud, but no one has to know. So, with that, the boar is going to attack the only target it can see, which is still Sparky, unfortunately. Yes. 16 does not. I have armor class 17. Okay, so you're able to, like, grab its tusks and like, begin to wrestle with it as it tries to butt you once again. Like, <laughs> with that, it is now your turn. You are up. Okay. I will do the same thing I did. I will 
take the action to get an extra d6 damage with the fun oh, Okay. Oh, that's not a good one. That's a miss, as you bring the gun up and butt the head on the if you call causes you to fire upwards. With that, Tail, you are up and still invisible. Uh, any chance suggestion would work on a boar? I think it has to understand um, your language. Yeah, and I try, but I don't think it's going to work. I mean, it's a reason why charm beast and the like exist. Can I attempt an animal handling while invisible? You can. I mean, technically, you can do anything whilst invisible. Yeah, I'll see if I can manage to soothe it somehow. Go ahead and make me the animal handling check. <laughs> you try and pat it and soothe it down. And the boar just goes... <laughs> it is incredibly confused as to who pat it, where is it coming from. It is unfortunately now very, very confused. You still have your bonus action if you, you want to use that. Yeah, I may as well use that with my uh, Draconic Roar to give Sparky advantage on his attacks against it. And so the boar always not out confused and a loud row, row, row echoes throughout uh, the uh, pig pen. I mean, everyone can hear it, but as far as your kids are and Sparky, it's the spirit of your friends calling on the wind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And with that, we come back to the top of the round. Mirage, you're up. Are, are, are the children safe at this point? Please tell me the children are safe. Yes, they are. They are safe. Cool. And we, I am still invisible, even though I did an attack. I'm going to. All right, it's invisible for one hour, so I will say that it's probably it's probably going to fade after this battle. Oh, okay, slightly less cool, but I'm still going to. You know what? I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm I'm out of ideas, so I'm just gonna to charge it and 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 whack it over the head with my staff. I'm just gonna flank with Sparky over here, and I'm gonna whack it with advantage with my quarterstaff. That is a solid hit. You whack it on the head, Sparky. You have the powerful roar of your friend's spirit on the wind, and then uh, you see in the four staring at you, and then just I don't know where it goes. It is unconscious and swaying. It is like a Mortal Kombat character just before the words FINISH HIM appears on screen. I think I have a bonus attack with unarmed. Yes, so yes, gonna, you do. I'm gonna uh, attempt to do that. Yes! Mirage! Yes. <laughs> okay, so, as it's swaying uh, back and forth. <laughs> as you're swaying back and forth, Sparky, you load your cannon and give the boar a terrifying glare. And... It's apparently a glare so powerful that the boar instantly goes and clearly passes out in fright. That's the yeah. only possible explanation for why it is now unconscious and lying in the middle of the pig pit. <laughs> uh, delayed reaction for my strikes. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, definitely what's happening here. And so... Mirage, Mirage would like to hear that and then just go like... Sneak away! <laughs> Can I minor illusion a five foot megalodon? Dear <laughs> God, it's followed you here! <laughs> Truly, the magic here is terrible that it brings things that aren't real to life in form, albeit rather small. Yeah, Dear God, it's it. actually real! <laughs> Before it reaches full size, he'll try and destroy it. After a good amount of time, you get spent some time chasing after this small megalodon and you believe you finally destroyed it once and for all which gives teal and mirage some, enough time to get far away from the situation and and so this point the candy turn wears off and you're back to being visible again so if we're still keeping this as recon i shall say a Maybe we shall start expediting this, so... I remember that the the dude that we um, bought the junk from, like the, the little the, the seller of mm -hmm. the trinkets and stuff, that, that he threw a rock and it broke a window. I would like to be there and intercept the rock so it doesn't break a window. It's it's tiny, but every little bit counts. Okay, don't then. Go ahead and make me a dex check real quick. Watch as I roll a one now. Let's go. 
Oh, fucks. Unfortunately, you aren't able to stop up him, and he goes, Oh, no. Thanks until I know. Okay, I take a note of the time and the angle so I can do it better next time. And then I'm going to run to the comedian and try and catch her before she goes on stage and give her that pep talk that worked the last time, but before she goes on stage. Go ahead and make me up a Asian check. During this, Sparky will be telling Teal about the other... Oh, like, come other, on! So there's an invisible <laughs> spellcaster that made a tiny shark. Try and keep a straight face. <laughs> Whilst that amazing tale is being told, you try to give her the pet tour, but she's like, Ah, thank you very much, but no, I've got this. I've got this this time. My material is absolutely flawless. And unfortunately, she goes out and gets booed again. But at least you now know what not to say next time. Just to double check, is there anything to you and Sparky want to check quickly before or you guys meet for your or catch up? Could I just try and catch ear of anyone to find out if anything else terrible happened after the fact? All right, all right. and uh, make me a perception. Nope, not very perceptive. Still looking for You're a still tiny shot. You're still living... Yeah. <laughs> yes, you're looking for a tiny shark and still living off the high of the uh, epic boar battle you've been in had by yourself. Definitely yeah, sing by single, yourself. Single-handedly beat that. Where were you guys? <laughs> <laughs> All of you meet up towards the end of the day as the snacking on the pudding begins. And Elsie goes, Okay, I managed to stop the puppet guy getting run over. His show was very cute, so that was all very good. And I managed to stop Porter choking this time, although in fairness, we did have to call it off because uh, something really weird's going on here. Um, those are eels, right? I, you saw them the previous days. They were regular eels before, right? Oh no, is it getting worse every day? Yeah, um, they seem to have turned into a breed with teeth, so they are actively trying to fight back and eat some of the participants, it it got off the real bad real fast. Ooh, I saw, I mean, I heard that the boar was also not quite as big last time. Yeah, from the stories I've heard, it's normally supposed to be a little piglet. That's why they let children play with it. Let's say, Iraq, the undercounter goes, uh, yeah, so we had a look around. Couldn't find any minions you asked us to do. So it turns out the rest of the contest, the guy was so busy hyping himself up. Okay, first off, I don't know why anyone would just stand on top of a pile of uh, uh, wooden boxes. That just sounds like it's like a recipe for trouble. But he was so worked up, he stamped one of the boxes and injured himself in the process. It's, uh, yeah, he, it fell off a pile. It, it, it got uh, nasty. Well, that seems easily fixable, though, at least. Can I ask about your yeah. mage? Can he cure curses? I might be able to get him to do it, but he's been, honestly, he's been sulky all day, and he hasn't come back yet. Just, just FYI, he was definitely planning on overthrowing you. Mr. Captain, sir, just putting that out there. Oh, that figures. Okay. So right. if you want to kill uh, him, I feel uh, like you're pretty justified. I but mean, I I'd rather not kill any of my own men, but at the same time, he is a prick. I'd advise you to do it after the loop, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that. Oh, this is so awkward. I mean, uh, you know what? It, it's not worth dwelling on. Point is, um, you know, let, let's just get some sleep and loop this and try and break it this time, shall we? Shall we? Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. A plus, plus point. Big plus point. Big plus point. We totally did talk to the goddess, and this plan is totes going to work out if we actually manage to, like, you know, next loop around, let's try and stop all the bad shit from happening instead of just reconning it. Okay. Yes, yes, we can... Break the loop. We can break the loop. Also, the if loop. she's, uh, if we break the loop, she's gonna probably be powerful enough to fix your friend. Wait, wait, is this serious? Yeah, she's a goddess. She just needs to, you know, get rid of the the, the evil dude who's dampening her magic, and then she can fix your friend. 
Oh. Oh. Oh, um... That's... <laughs> um, um... Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll round up my men and tell them all to do good. I guess. Yes, I'll go do that. I'll go do that. And he walks off. Okay, sleep uh, well. Don't get fired uh, in the face in the night. Elsie, the looks at the, it was with the expression and goes, Oh, good. I'm not the only one who's not used to being good and nice. Uh, she, he says, Well, I guess we um, all got our parts to play. I gonna have to try and save the puppeteer and the guy again. Um, anyone else you want me to save whilst I'm here? Yeah. I mean, you could just like spirit away the eels completely and, um, you know, do away with that part. I feel like that's probably something that you might be good at. That might be something that the minions are doing. So maybe we have to yeah. camp out those parts. Yeah, in the, in the pen. The eels. I'll see what I can do. I should be able to set the animals free, so, let's say. Maybe prevent and that stuff from happening. Do you two want to like camp out in like? Do you boys want to camp out uh, uh, where 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 the pig the suck the, the little pig is gonna get turned into the big pig, and the two of us camp out where the eels are gonna get turned into tooth eels, and we'll just try and snag some minions. Have we figured out a timeline? Can do we have to do these two things separately, or can we do like one thing and then the other? I think the the first thing say, was the two, I... and then the second thing was hmm. the puppeteer, if I'm not wrong. And then there was yeah. Grease Pig, and then there was the EO after that. And then there was the Break in the Window, Comedia and the Wrestling. And that I might miss something out there. I think Okay, the higher. wrestling did happen slightly earlier, but other than that, yeah, okay. yes, you did they managed to get well, Okay. We've got, we've got the we've got the bandits on the on the wrestler dude, so that should be covered. Yes. And you have to inform Cloud Wheel what's going on. Oh, right. Okay. So let's let's wake up early again and uh, do the whole talk with Clary in the morning so that that's all done. Stop the totifying, Sparky then the grease will... pig, then the eels? Sparky will obviously brag that he can deal with the pig by himself, because he totally <laughs> did last time. Yes, yes. Indeed, definitely. Definitely. All right. We just want to be there to watch you this time, you know, as you heroically deal with that pig. Arr. My rundown, as it would be, would be we do the god talk at the start to get the candy, and then there's the toad, potentially that the mage can deal with that, then there's a puppeteer, the thief is doing that, then there's a grease pig, that's going to be a battle, then there's the eel eating contest, the thief is potentially going to deal with that as well, then there's a trinket seller, would we'll stop that, break in the window, then there's a the wrestling, the bandits might stop that, and then there's the comedian, and then hopefully a cure at the end. And then maybe meeting the gnome to, uh, <gasps> yeah, at the very end, maybe. Do we have? Do we have okay. any plan for stalling the gnome? I think distracting him until the banishment can be done, which we'd have to speak at the start to the other god. Okay. 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 Well, do we know at what point he's going to turn up so that we can meet him to distract him at the end of the day? Can we definitely be discussing this in a place that's like? Yes. No yes, 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 yes. I will say that you guys have moved to the. I'll say that you guys have moved to the end at this point. Yeah. Have we like from the from the past loops? Is there any point that we can narrow down where he is definitely going to be somewhere where we can find him before the end? We followed him out to the okay. forest. Okay. I will say that from the, the loops, you figured out that essentially he does the whole toad thing and just waits for Clowry for some reason he wants to try and get permission from her you're not 100 percent sure why but exactly each time loop his motive is do something bad get clary out into the, the woods to have that talk and then it inevitably turns to stone but in fact this time as you head back you do find her petrified in a different part of the woods and you see erdlin walking off at a half going not but link this. I would do all their promise to kidnap the children. Should even bloody tell <laughs> And mother some curse up underneath his breath once more. Okay, but at the end of the day, is there any place um, where we Essentially, long story short, oh, he does his thing and then just waits for Clowry to turn up. So he basically you can approach him at any time. Okay, he just waits around the main tent. Yes. Okay. And uh, well, after in she's the woods, after she's 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after she's stonified, and that's that's all done with, because that happens relatively early in the day, if I got that correct. That happens right after the toad thing, yeah? More or less. It's when she finds out about it. It happened around midday okay. when you, you got eyes there. Okay. And after that, like in the evening, when the whole thing, when the pudding gets revealed, etc. and so forth, is he around at some point there? Because we do need time to get all our good deeds out, because I don't think that we'll manage to do that until noon. Okay. Already. Essentially, the upshot is, if you can tell Clary to wait until a specific time, wait until you're all ready, ah, um, okay. then you can... You can save it at any time. The, the conversation can happen at any time. So it's basically just convincing Kyrie to wait and then confront him later. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Time loops are a lot. And with that, you all head back and repeated the same suggestion trick, but having to repeat it a couple more times on the confused bandits and Elsie, you begin to say your plan in motion for what should hopefully be the final loop. And that's where we're going to take a quick big break. But don't go anywhere, folks, but we'll be right back. Once more, you wait a cut up on the, the on the day, and once again, you are out, outside, and it is six o'clock in the morning. Everyone's busily trying to hurriedly open everything, and the brass better get and okay, that's all prepared. <coughs> oh God, sorry, I woke up a really burnt. <coughs> oh God, my. Just gonna grab like a tin of raw coffee and just be like, bah, dar, dar. <laughs> <laughs> you're just grabbing the coffee beans from the kitchen, shoving them into your mouth while you're waiting for them to be. <laughs> yeah, it's no time. <laughs> just caffeine <laughs> straight into the system. After the, the bad intents wake up, so your first protocol is checking on the animals, correct? I think we were going to meet the goddess. Yeah, that was yeah. like. Ah, uh, yes. Story. When I was going to sleep, I had a thought. Maybe it's not smart of us to intervene with the toad thing, because that's kind of the... Like, if we intervene with that, he's just going to make up some other mischief to, to lure her out. So maybe we should not intervene with the toad thing. If we're lucky, yes. the mage might be able to reverse the curse. Okay, so let's definitely let him do it, and then wait outside in the woods for her and see if the mage can reverse the curse after the fact. That's a good idea. Let's go. Okay, cool. Can I have one of can I have one of those beans? <laughs> okay. So you pretty much pick up a dragon, so it's like, oh hello there, can I? Oh my and see you take it all back and then you explain the entire I have plan so she goes. Okay, I understand. Candy, candy, who wants candy? Yeah. Um, go ahead and roll me a d6 each. I like to imagine it's when you've played a cinematic in a game before and like the text is being skipped past. <laughs> so, yes. <how> explain it. <laughs> That's essentially what's happening. Okay, so Mirage, you get the 10 temporary hit points. Ooh, have we had okay. five before? 
Mirage, you get the temporary hit points. Teal, you are now feeling what Mirage felt was a couple of days ago, which is you feel like you can walk on air, and, and your walking speed has now doubled for 24 hours. And Spaggy, you feel like you're feeling confident in it. Like, you're on for the first time. Anything is possible. Even if that Megalodon did suddenly come to life, I could t take it on and destroy it. You gain advantage on all saving throws for 24 hours. Uh, we've got a plan now. That shark won't appear again. So, with all of that, Elsie he turns to the bandit to go, All right, big guy, I'm saving pop up a pop-up to eels. You're on to the wrestler. Let's move. All of you begin to split it off. So we can go rapid fire through this. First of all, order call. So we left the toad thing happen. The puppeteer has mm -hmm. been dealt with a thief. I believe mm -hmm. that means we're up to the pig. We have to deal pig, with yeah. pig. Yeah, we have to deal with that. Okay. Right. And Alrighty then. Go ahead and make me a stealth check. Surprisingly good. Oh, easily done. Mr. Snuffles has been healed, but he is still a giant boar, so you are able to slowly ease him out of his pen and into the woods without too much problems. So you're able to get out him far away from the children. The only slight mishap is someone going, What the fuck? Did you see that giant boar? Yeah, nice try, lay off the ale. Uh, no, seriously, there was a giant boar in the woods! But no one is harmed, so we're all good there. And we didn't see anybody, like, turning him into a giant boar. Like, he was one from the start, as far as we can tell. Make me either an arcana check or a religion check. Well, that was kind of why we wanted to stake the place out before it happens, to, like, maybe catch a minion or two. Okay, arcana? Or religion. It's up to you. I'll give religion a shot, then. Okay. Collectively, between all of you, you suddenly get the sense that these random things that are happening, Erdlin forcing this time loop and essentially exerting his will over the, the town with his curse, this is a small taste of the potential side effects that, that could happen. His influence is kind of just warping aspects of the day. So it's not like, it's not like he's doing this consciously, but because he's essentially running rampant, it's slowly corrupting elements of the town. And you feel that that slight oppressive nature you were feeling before is now feeling really thick. And when you were talking to Clowry earlier, she's gone, Yes, there is great evil in the air. I thought that was odd. <laughs> so this has been like progressing for further and further, like, it's gone from, hmm, that's like the odd, and now on the fourth day she's like, the air is thick with his evil. So, it's getting slowly worse and worse over the course of the couple of days. Okay. okay. So the only clue that we have to any minions is still that one kid that was running away from something. That's it. That's all that we got. And, yes, it does seem to be the kid. Nice. Given that you're, you stake them out and you realize that there's no way to stop these guys when he's turning into things. I will say that you can make a survival check to see if you can see any sign of these mini. No sign yet. So, I mean, the next thing would be the eel-eating contest, but the thief is dealing with that. So then it would be the mm -hmm. trinket seller's window. We'd try and protect that from breaking. All right. Anyone can make me a dexterity save. What is if it all trying of to us stop up there? Made like a human shield in front of the window. Well, <laughs> one of us goes and is like, no, don't throw that. And the other two are on standby to shield the window if he does. Yep. All right. So one person make a persuasion check. The other two make me, yeah, make me dex checks. I'll go on dex. So you're not able to go, Snob, don't do that. And he, as he's about to front, he goes, But those kids are running over my. Oh, yeah, that is very near the greenhouse. And oh, you two have caught those kids. Ah, thank you. Thank you. That's that's easily sorted then. And that's a tick. Uh, that, that was that, that able to be solved. 
you so, I'm going to say Todd looking bad it's like okay okay we swapped all the crates around he was able to get through his speech there's a wrestling contest going on right now I've had to stop my men from watching the whole thing or entering but okay we, we've done that bit we've done that good 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 awesome it's the comedian I think Oh god. Oh, let's give the comedian another shot. Teal, please, 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 please come along with me and help me out with this one. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, give you a body inspiration before. Hopefully you can pass that inspiration on to her. Hopefully, let's see. Alrighty, make me a persuasion check with advantage. Ah, oh, splendid. Okay, advantage. Let's go. And I will cast bardic inspiration on her. <laughs> okay. So, it's almost comes like a big fit of music where you are confronting them, giving a big inspirational speech. They tell her to believe even herself, relay her past experiences, to rely on the inner spirit within you. And as you're doing so, Teal is behind you, giving you a big dramatic film music that makes the speech that much more inspiring. <laughs> and she he is, and it finally goes, all right, yes. Yes, yes, I've got it. I've got it. I can do this. I can do this. And she runs on stage and you can hear laughter from the audience. Like even the bad pun she performs with a lot more confidence than she had originally. And she's able to, even with the one or two hecklers there, she's able to, with that high persuasion role, I'll say that she's easily able to essentially shoot back at the heckler. Can I get fucked? I from th th this job, uh, it goes, ha, uh, depends, can I kick you out of the audience? Anyway, and just cap on his own. And with all of that, you are, are able to make her routine run swiftly and give her a nice confidence and morale boost, which she can t uh, carry on forth. There is one slight odd detail in that at the very end, she goes, all right, all right, thank you very much. May Erdland the Destroyer be with you! Farewell! As she walk, walks off the stage. This needs hey. to be dealt with ASAP. <laughs> okay. You, well, what if she forgot to do with that? <laughs> I mean, it could be a joke, just um, a really bad taste one. You do confront her afterwards, and she goes, Nope. No, what are you talking about? I made, made, the, I made a prayer to Clowery. Why would I mention Erdland? Oh, we must have misheard. Sorry, not not Halfling. It must have been the... Yeah, never mind. You did I... great! It was so fun. Hey! Can I insight check that? Go ahead. Not very insightful. Still looking for a phantom <laughs> shark. Still looking for phantom results. Still looking for minions. It's possible that maybe, maybe, a phantom was feeding her lines! That's the only thing you can think of. You know what? They spoke of a monster being in the forest earlier. That was probably the shark as well. So, with all of that, you've been around the town in a massive devil whirlwind, but things seem to be going well. As you start to be back in the hall, Aori comes up to you and goes, Ah, yes. Yes, I can feel it. The town is so alive and bubbling with life. You, you've done unrig and stuff to these people. We think that there might be some agents in the forest, like we heard talk of monsters, but we haven't went any for that up. But the mage, if they're back, should have done remove curse. So hopefully we should be on the cusp of everything we had written down done. The smart answer goes, you've done a fantastic job keeping them ever alive and happy for everyone. Now, let's go over and pay a little visit, shall we? So that your hard work is not undone. And so... Do you like one up? Let us go first, and we'll start distracting him, and then you sneak up and start doing your casty stuff while we deal with definitely minions. I can do that. That's the bandit. It's also probably going, um, what do you want us to do? Do you want us in around as well, or...? I think that might be a little too much, or would that be... Because he might just, like... He might feel like he's getting attacked then, and then... Yeah, us. how about... How about the bandits stay behind and protect the goddess? Just in case okay. any minions, like, sneak up behind her? Yeah, yeah, sure, we could do that, we could do that. Is she strong enough to cure that guy yet? In the response to that, she goes, Once we've banished Erdin, I should have enough power to do that. Alright. 
And with that, all of you enter the woods, following the same path you had done before. And once again, you find yourself in the woods with Udlin in the center of it. Cal Marie is um, hiding in a nearby tree, trying not to draw attention to herself. The bandits have managed to sneak up close by. Elsie is also hiding in the trees. And you see, uh, you see Erdlin in standing in the forest. You can also hear, hear some other sounds nearby. As he slowly walk, walk up, he goes, Ah, we've done this many times. I knew you would come, so let's get the introduction out of the way. I am Erdlin! Wait a Hi, second. Hi, sir! What are you doing here? <gasps> oh Why my you gosh, you're the dude who turned the mayor into a toad! Yes, yeah, wait, you weren't there for, I, did I see you then? Or was that, that was a We heard day, about it, it they, had, they had a very interesting description of you, but I don't think your hairline is quite as receding as they said. Can I, can I come Make closer and have a look at that? <laughs> Make me a deception check just for that. Deception, all right. Okay. So he goes, well, I, I, I do suppose this is, is that, that, that must have been what happened. Okay, okay. Um, I'm, honestly, I, hmm. Well, um, anyway, uh, would you mind scooting off? Uh, there's someone I'm happy to meet here. I've got this uh, big thing I have prepared for them. Uh, please pay no attention to that tree over there. Oh, I, I said, don't pay attention. Why would I? It's just a tree. Sir, you, I'm sure you're like such an amazing spellcaster if you can turn somebody just into a toad. Hey, I'm, I dabble in spellcasting just a little bit. Um, do you think you could give me pointers? Like, there's definitely a few X lovers that I would not mind toadifying. I'm just saying we can get a little bit. Of okay. It. So. So uh, is it like just is how... a powder thing or, or... <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. Okay, <laughs> this is how it's going to go. I need you to make me a persuasion check as you're trying to essentially distract him long enough. Okay, it's more of a, like a curse powder. I managed to buy... Yeah, yeah, I totally bought it. Um, I totally... Um... Oh, who am I kidding? I'm the gun of green. I, I stole the powder. It's a curse powder. It's like a polymorph spell you blow into it, but... Uh, anyway, Ooh, I should probably get Can I to... buy some? You need, need to make 10 successful checks. You have done so. Every time someone does it continuously, the DC of these checks will go up. So, essentially, to reset the AC back low, someone else has to step in to make the distraction. He, he goes, uh, no, 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 I don't need the green. Anyway, anyway, I really need you guys to get going now. Uh, so, as you are a, a god, our... I was wondering if you could uh, replace my leg on my arm. I uh, respect your hairline as well. I'm a big fan of it myself. Okay, uh, <laughs> make me a persuasion check with that one. There you go. Uh, um, okay, no. For, even if I could fix it, I'm the god of greed. I don't fix things. I don't give it away. I'm pure evil. Now, uh, if you don't. Uh, um, uh, mind? That is one check egg down. I will also say at this point, if you want to try something else, I'm more than willing, uh, rather than just a straight persuasion or deception, I'm more than willing to let, uh, let you give it a go. So with that, see you're up, as Udlin's now dying to try and walk away. You're, you're, you're good agreed, right? So um, you can teach me how to get more gold? Make me a persuasion check. The look like the doing goes, Oh, I can see the little evil in heart in you. Well, okay. First off, um, you essentially you just got to be bold about it. Just don't care about anyone or anything. Just murder them, steal their gold, then run. It's very easy. Although I say it's easy. To be honest, you look kind of small and too cute and cuddly to do all of that, really. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I would love to stay in chat, but um, I've got to find. Find someone, and you know what? This is a shift in the wind. I'm not liking where this is going. What are you kidding? We just want to like we've never met a god before. How how does one actually worship you? Like, do you have 
churches or do we just like go around doing evil deeds and that will power you up that would be that would be you know we could probably do that we're friends with bandits and stuff make me persuade these at this time yeah let's say persuasion well if you're like my new followers um essentially um every time you kill or steal something just do it in my name just let let the world know that I'm your inspiration, you see. Uh, in fact, actually, oh, speaking of which, I've got this great thing. In fact, you can actually help me. See, um, I've got some, I do have some help around here, but, you know, I think it would be more impressive if, uh, the, the, um, okay, in the tree, there are kidnapped children. I would like you to essentially just hold blaze at them. See, when the person comes, I'm going to try and blackmail them so, you know, because they have kidnapped these even the, these children and and now you can see high up in the trees there were like um kids that have um, been tied up going, ah, 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 ah. yes uh i was basically i'm trying to get what i want by threatening the children so um if you could um so essentially if, if you could just like, like put blades to their throat so that um when they, they come they are definitely definitely gonna give me what i want this time he revealed that so i was going to do what i was going to do to try and lure him into true line but spiky will say oh we probably have to give a tribute to our god i've got uh 45 gold pieces and he'll get a sack i was going to throw it at the tree line to try and make him go over there and reveal what's in there now we know i'm gonna just throw it behind him to try and make him turn around okay hey in that case do a regular attack roll for that regular attack roll okay I will just roll my weapon attack. Okay. But, yeah, that, that is the same roll. It's a natural one. You end up like you follow the gold. No, sorry, do say like oh, oh gosh, you you dare attack a god with? Wait a minute, what's that glowing in the trees over there? And he it likes to do you see like Cloudy like the the man himself goes ah. Oh, wait, ah, you, she was right there, I had a whole monologue, and you're distracting me with this, the whole moment's ruined, the, the children have been revealed now, ah. alright, you know what, I know I can get rid of you at any time, minions, kill them, so, with that, I'm going to ask you to vault on the initiative. Thanks to all the e checks, you now only have to survive five more rounds before all the banishment spell begins. <laughs> I was almost hoping the bag exploding in his face might be good, so we might like go down the floor <laughs> yeah. and like, try and pick him up and spend more time. That would have been cool. Okay. Okay, so we have Teal at the top of the round, followed by them, De and it's Mirage, and either. Lee Sparky bringing up the rear. Okay. So, at the top up of the, the round, he has said minions go to the attack. T Eel, you're up, but you have, don't see signs of anything that could attack you. I can't see anyone at the moment. So I'm going to hold my action to cast, yeah, Suggestion. Or what I perceive to be his minion. And I'll okay. tell them to lie down, I guess, and uh, stay still. It all comes right out to the air turn. With all of the Let's go. All right, on. The and it's run across going, all right, all right. And they all charge to try and form a line between themselves and Cloudway as she they begin in casting. Uh, then he goes, wow, God, more of you! More of you! Really? Else he begins to move around here to try and get us into the children and with a man it is with a well timed shot to cut up the rope over one of the children so they're able to break free but they like pull up the gag at themselves and they suddenly yell the monsters they're right in front of you and Raj out of the nowhere something suddenly uh um, slash it is at your left leg or in blood. You take seven points of slashing damage. Meanwhile, one of them is going to attack you, Sparky. Alright, you take seven points of slashing damage as well. The rest of them are 
over the round. One of them is going over to attack to Eel as well. Oh boy. And is go to leave his mark in your head. You can actually uh, feel the blood trickle down and your snout as it cuts right there and blood comes from under the eyes as you take 10 points of slashing damage. And you can see the bandits also slightly descend into panic as one of them gets sliced as well. And also, uh, finally, to end this round, Erblin turns around onto the woods and then they go up and Oi! Wizard boy! Are you gonna do your bl are they job now? And it's at this point, the wizard pops out of the trees and goes, Ah, fine, whatever. And is going to attempt to shoot a fireball and what's that? Hey, you, Sparky. Fortunately, it's not a fireball because it would have hit either way. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm but sorry. Yeah, I know. I misspoke. It's a different thing. It does thing. not hit me. No, not a 14. Okay. You're able to bat it out the, the sky to it, he goes, Okay, um, and that is the end of their turn. Mirage, you're up. Okay, so Fairy Fire is a 20-foot cube. Do I mm -hmm. want to just dump this on top of us? So from what I could tell, I got an attack from in front of me. And Sparky got an attack from in front of me, and somewhere down here there's another thing, and somewhere around mm. here is another thing. I'm kind of tempted to literally just dump it here on top of us, including him. Go for it. Although that would be that would be attacking him, so not including him. Okay. Um, are you are you guys willing to do deck saves? Yeah, I will take it. I've got advantage on deck saves right now, actually. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, doing that. Just fairy right. fire in this area. And um, I need deck saves, DC 14. Myself as well. Oh, <gasps> come on, I failed it. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> okay. So. so I, know why why I, I do too. Rolls. We're all glittery. <laughs> uh, so. All, all except to heal, then one of the uh, managers to uh, escape. So. You are now covered in pink glitter than stand up out of our and you manage to see a shape of somebody in front of you, but it shakes the glitter off and is uh, still invisible. One of them is visible and right in front of you. So, T Eel, you still have your held action and it hasn't come around to your turn yet, so you can use it if you want. Uh, yeah, I may as well. Now on the one in front of me. It lies down. This thing comes in glitter, it goes. So it shrugs and is now on the floor. That comes to the Sparky. Okay, being as I have that feat that lets me uh, reload without having to use my bonus action, the uh, gunner feat that allows me to ignore the loading properties, I will use my bonus action as he calls up to the sky. Give me strength tomorrow. These demons are real. I will cast Shield of Faith on myself as a bonus action. Because I got hit last okay. round. Okay. And as my main action, instead of taking a regular attack action, I will use my action to Thundermonger. Uh, there was one in front of Mirage, right? We saw it for a second, even though I yes. can't see it. So I will fire at it at disadvantage. Yes. I will attempt. Go for it. But it would have been nice if it was. Anyway, it's an 18. Okay, that hits. You make a calculation and fire with it, essentially firing where it's going. Going to be, and you shoot it straight up. Oh my! God. And you make it visible, essentially, like now leaking a weird ghostly vapor, and it is looking really rough. Like one more good hit, it is going to take it out at this point. With that, Ail, hey, you're up. As we go back to the top of the round, I'm going to cast Sea Invisibility. Yes, with the sea visibility, you're able to see the additional figures, and I will put a blue mark on the ones that the teal can see as they begin to appear. Yeah, this appears to be the last of them as they begin to show her. And then it's my bonus action to do my measly little roar to give everyone advantage on the things that can hear me. Alrighty then. You, once again, you let out a little wow, wow, wow. It's once again, it's but uh, as it, uh, the front ends. It's, you can, and 
even in the distance, you can hear Amabri still focusing on the spell uh, DVC star. I'll go, oh, I'm going to. And fuck. <laughs> so, with that, as it comes round to them. Uh, other big build of power goes. And now I shall turn you to. Well, that better be a roar. Uh, he's completely thrown off his own concentration. Meanwhile, <laughs> Elsa he, he is able to get Ed around out here and free the other child. But me, well, the bandits are sl having a hard time fighting this uh, one invisible guy, uh, mainly because Teal's the only one who can see him. And then uh, some, some of them are already taking vicious hit hits on that side. Meanwhile, the one who's just been hit is going to turn around and try and stab you, Sparky. He does have advantage because yeah, I lit us all up, uh, and I haven't so, I haven't managed to drop concentration on that yet. Okay, fair enough. You you take six points of slashing damage as it comes in with a sheer amount of force that even praying to your god has not protected you from, as even they were caught unawares by uh, their, this ferocity. You take six points of slashing damage. Make concentration. I still maintain my shield of faith. Unwavered. Which is good because the one only um, t Il can see attacks you. 19, yeah, with the plus two. You take eight points of slashing damage as they manage to slice you in the back. You just told it to lie down, so it has no reason to not continue lying down for the moment. So it's just going to sit there. <laughs> Last but not the least, this is is going to go, okay, okay, um, I'm just going to move up here. And he's going to throw a firebolt at um, Util. And I'm presuming Ted's a miss. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, I'm just going to throw. <laughs> okay, that's a miss. Right, right, right. And is now going to try and hide in a tree. So, <laughs> with that, we come round to Mirage. You are up. Okay, first off, I'm going to drop concentration on the glitter. We are okay. no longer glittery. And then I'm going to call to the kids. How are you guys seeing them? Is there a trick? And then I'm going to... Oh, you did to... not see them! <laughs> okay, okay. So it's something about children. Right, right, right. I am going to assume that there's something... Like... Oh, this guy appeared. Yeah, this guy appeared. I'm going to fuck yes. him up. I'm okay, gonna go move... for I'm going to move up to here. And I'm gonna s s smack, smack, smack a bitch. Go for it. Hopefully, with advantage, because I'm flanking. That's a firm number hit. Do you step up and swing? And yeah, that's an after take him out. You can see the vapor you know, leaking out of whatever this creature is. You basically do a series of die. Oh, it's about wild staff swings that go <laughs> and are basically able to trip it and smack it on the head before it finally is KO'd and is gone. Okay. I don't see this guy. I don't see this guy at all. No, at the moment, the ones with the blue dots, Teal's the only one who yes. sees them. Okay, so I move 10 feet. I'm going to move another 10 20 30 to around here ish where i see the bandits clumping up to fight something question mark and wildly attack something which allows me to move those extra 10 feet and i'm gonna okay. bardic inspiration so, myself for a blade flourish to deal extra damage okay go ahead and make me an attack roll disadvantage as you'll um swing me wildly this is an unarmed attack because it's my bonus action Okay. 17. That hits. Um, <gasps> you launch into... You, you kind of launch into this, like, half battle an arena, half uh, uh, straight aid fighter, like, spinning whirlwind kick, which in any other situation would be wildly impractical, but because it's wide swinging and this creature wasn't expecting it, you spin around and you do feel the sort of... and smack something across the side of the head, and it takes Sweet. five points. It's a bludgeoning damage. It takes more because I flourished. He takes... Okay. Oh, another eight, and that hops onto my defense, so I'm now... That was that was my defensive flourish. I am now... Nice. Um, so um, buff. It's, it's buffer. now... Yeah, t it was the only one who could see it, but it is now, like, rocked and seen stars going... 
Uh, well, like, uh, you can see that Mirage somehow managed to land a kick right on its head, and it's now basically suffering the effects of a concussion. With that, that ends your action, so, uh, Sparky, you are up. Okay, I can't see any of them, but I know that... The ones with blue dots, no. You yeah, know, know that one of the... I know Mirage hit a one over here, so I'm just going to try it with disadvantage. Yes, and you also know that the one behind you slashed you in the back. Well, this one I saw, right, and it died. Yeah. Yes, that one you saw when okay. it died. There were t two attacks on you that round. One in front that, and I, one behind. And I know this guy is, is here, but I'm hoping he'll yeah, just give up he just when everything's hit. said and done. So. Sorry. Do I have advantage from Teal? So this will be a straight roll. I thought he did a roar that gave me advantage or something. I'd have to hit this guy. I will do that. Yes. Oh, I meant to do Thunder Mongo, but it's the same roll. Okay, that is a firm hit. So that is plus a d6 thunder. 17 point of damage. You're emboldened by the other uh, the roar. You turn around to where you fit think you saw of the, the damage and by a straight lead ahead. Teal, only you can see this because to everyone else it looks like you just shot up through, through the tree for no really apparent reason. Teal, you see that Sparky managed to fire straight ahead and essentially almost the DBZ star blasts a hole straight through its chest, which it looks like goes and just collapses dead. Buffy's like, ah, I missed. Alrighty. And we now go back to the top of the round. Teal, you're up. I'm gonna go on to the other one. Just Jonan, I rolled the wrong damage dice for my flourish. Just give that guy three extra hit points, please. Okay, fair, fair enough. Fair. Thank you. And I'll just pack it on my rapier. Uh, am I able to get advantage flanking here? I mean, the bandit is considered an ally, so I'd say yes in this situation. That is a hit. You do come in running up with a nice swipe, and it is still like it is still some. I mean, if excellent of uh, the kick from earlier, you're able to run up and. Honestly, it would pinpoint accurately thrust it straight into the middle of the chest and it goes, oh. And it fades away on the end. And as it, this is happening, the it come, um, do, you do you have any other actions you want to take? Uh, that's it. Okay. It comes round no, to the uh, term to which it's Erdlin is already announced and they're looking in a bit of dismay, like, how? How have they killed things which are inv You're supposed to be invisible and deadly! That's the, that's the entire reason I... Ah! You, wizard, you better do something or I swear you're gonna find out why I'm called the God of Murder. Um, yeah, yeah, just your boss, your boss, your boss. Um, I'm just going to come up here and um, roast you? As he prints up his hand. Um, go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw as he tries to cast Burning Hands on you. Myself? Yes. Okay. I uh, still have advantage because of candy. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, you dodge that one. So, you take six points of damage from, from that as you're able to duck out of the way as he just essentially a bit dismayed about how badly things are going, essentially does like a very panic. <laughs> Son, I've been half killed before. The thing about growing and learning is you need to know what battles you can fight and what battles you can walk away from. And if you don't walk away now, you're not going to walk away. Make me an intimidation check. Okay. Plus zero. <laughs> Not very intimidating. <laughs> he did just burn my face. <laughs> <laughs> he was. All right. No offense, but he's the god of murder. I chose to work for him. I don't want to find out what happens when you piss him off. So I'm just gonna continue trying to burn you. If that's cool. Are you cool? He's obviously not cool with that, but I think I've used up my word limit. That is only fair enough. And actually, <laughs> so he then goes, okay, right. I can now do this. And it's at this point, 
the bandits all charge at him and start beating the ever-loving crap out of him. <laughs> As, um, realizing that he's the only one left, they uh, basically all go down and a bit... And I'll start like punching him in like a series of mod like you selfish asshole you villain. Just shake my head. And uh, told you to walk away, <laughs> son. I told you to walk away. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Adlin is look okay. I'm just going. Okay, okay. This is okay. Th th this is going bad. But you know what? And forget all this! I am still able to... Wait, what is... And you turn around to see that Clowry's finally fit in this, this spell as she goes, Edlin! God, I'd agree that your, your obsession with greed and murder will not welcome here! I banish you from this blade forevermore! And the, the bright light shines and hits up Edlin, who that goes... No, no, all I wanted was burning and you to personally invite me and for all my powers to affect the uh, uh, swerve more. Yes, maybe some of the gold and prizes. I just wanted the small face! As he is whisked away at a beam of light and vanishes from this town. Far, far away. And that, there's an island slowly descends on the, the forest. The group, the bandits, having finished beating the other loving crap out of their former colleague, to, uh, to, uh, this, this means it's all over, right? Yes, his presence is gone. And... My power is restored. So... I think I can help, help you out after all. And with that... I don't know about the rest of you, but all of that battle has worked up quite the appetite. I think I feel like a little bit of pudding. Heck yeah. <laughs> Party! Woo! <laughs> and so... With that, you all go back to the event there to celebrate. A few hours pass, but things have definitely all worked out. And his comrade has been healed thanks to a blessing for the goddess, as thanks for everything they've done. And all of you are able to sit around, trade stories, with the firm feeling that everything... Well, what uh, everything has has been said right. It's you are exhausted. You, it's not like you've been able to really enjoy this foot there to the fullest. But this meal, it's utterly raises your spirits. And the but and it's an I'll say the on the I said about like some I was just I'm even thinking, <laughs> you know, when I promised. Unless my sister, I would try to be, be better. I didn't think it was possible, but well, um, it's been nice. It's been nice, be uh, helping people like this. Uh, maybe it's not a, such a bad thing to keep doing. Sparky will will give them a little bit of pudding and also a straw for the mage because he's going to need the straw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's kind of in a, in a corner, like tied up, going. He's young. In time, he'll learn. But for now, the day's saved. And indeed. Who knows? Maybe, maybe we can do an honest living after all of this. And so, after a night of merriment, dance, and song, you all crawl back to the inn. And go over to a long, well-earned sleep. And then the next morning, you are woken from a voice outside the window. And it is a voice of the town crier. And he's saying, Show me the way to go home. I don't want to go to bed. 
That is like about an hour ago, and it's gone so soft. As he collapses into the mud outside, having apparently drunk a bit too much ale. But the definite confirmation that this is definitely the end of the loop. You know what it was? You have... Instead of having a single shot, he had a double shot like this one shot became. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And on that uh, no, no, it's you all right, you're able to celebrate that yes, everything happened, your good deeds mattered, the time loop is broken, and you are able to progress said Wait a minute, son of a bitch, is that the postman trying to run away from you? <laughs> <laughs> and you begin to run after the postman to get the package you've been waiting for, but that's an adventure for another day. For now, go arrest oh, our heroes. And that's where we're going to end this one shot double butter. <laughs>